In this example, we're going to look at the freezing point of water. Now remember, a few videos back, we looked at the boiling point of water. And if we remember correctly, we can see that uh, the relationship between the boiling point and temperature, this is, this is temperature and this is pressure, you can see that as the pressure increased, the temperature for water to boil had to increase as well. And it turned out that if the pressure was one atmosphere, which is of course what we typically experience on the Earth, then the boiling point had to be, or the boiling temperature had to be 100 degrees centigrade. Well, there's a similar kind of thing for the freezing point of water. Now typically, when there's one atmosphere pressure, water will begin to freeze at zero degrees centigrade. But as the pressure increases or decreases, there is an effect that temperature, the freezing point of water will actually change. Now, for example, if the pressure drops to 0 0.006 atmosphere, the temperature at which water will begin to freeze is 0 0.01 degrees centigrade. Now you say, well, 1 one hundred of a degree isn't very much. That's indeed true, but it's there. There is a difference. And likewise, if we then increase the, the atmospheric pressure, you can see that water will begin to freeze at even colder temperatures. For example, if the pressure is increased to 2,000 atmospheres, which is, of course, a great amount of pressure, water will not begin to freeze until uh, it reaches minus 22 degrees centigrade. So there is obviously an effect. And there's a practical aspect of that. So what I've drawn here is, you will, of course, not recognize it as such, but this is the bottom of a blade of an ice skate. And let's say that the length of the blade is about 25 centimeters and the width of the blade is about 3 millimeters. Now, if a, comp if a person's weight is completely standing on one blade on the ice that, that, pushes, that pushes down on the ice with an enormous amount of force, distributed over a very small area, with other words, that's a very high pressure. And at these higher pressures, the bottom of the ice skate can actually melt the ice, a very thin film of the ice because of the pressure, and that's why ice skates glide so easily over the ice. So let's find out what the atmospheric, or not the atmospheric, what the pressure would be of a person standing on a single ice skate blade. And so we know that the pressure is equal to the force divided by the area. And the force, of course, would be the weight of a person. Let's say the person has a weight of about 800 newtons. Hmm, that's maybe somewhere around 160 pounds or so. And the area, of course, would be the length times the width. So that would be 0 0.25 meters because 25 centimeters converted to meters is 0.25 meters. And 3 millimeters converted to meters is 0 0.003 meters. And so that will give us the pressure caused by the ice skate on the ice. So we have 800 divided by 0.25 divided by 0.003 equals, there it is. So the pressure would be about 1.07 times 10 to the 6 pascals, which is roughly equal to about 10 atmospheres. So you can see that the bottom of an ice skate blade pushes down on the ice with a tremendous amount of pressure, and therefore, with these higher pressures, water will actually freeze at a lower temperature, and it actually will cause the ice to melt, just a thin film of it between the ice, when the ice skate blade and the ice. So you can see that's a direct effect of the, um, of the result of adding additional pressure on the ice. Now also notice that this particular slope, it's actually a negative slope, is very peculiar to water and ice. The conversion from liquid to, to solid on ice has a very interesting relationship with pressure. Normally the curve looks like that for almost all other substances in the universe, but for water it's like this. Additional pressure will actually call, cause ice to melt, where in most cases, when you add more pressure to a substance, you can actually turn from a liquid into a solid, not so for ice. And later on in another video, we'll show you a little bit more about that particular diagram that illustrates that. But for now, we just want to show you a simple relationship between pressure and temperature and how it affects the, uh, the freezing point of water.